Hey everybody, so today uh, this is an exciting video. Um, I'm going to check out ChatGPT4 and what I want to show you today is setting up a model with Revit uh, and Dynamo. And so I'm going to use ChatGPT to generate code and the idea is that I'm going to copy paste that code into Dynamo, into the Python nodes, 100% uh, uh, no modification. Uh, only using ChatGPT. I'm going to time myself. Uh, that part of it's going to be fast forwarded and then I'm going to talk about it after. So you'll see that and then I'll export the chat so that you can read through that if you like. But what I want to show here is the way that designers and Anybody can interact with this type of technology and use it to do really cool things that they couldn't do before. Um, if you're a BIM person or a computational designer, you probably get leaned on a lot to develop things in Grasshopper, maybe it's add-ins, Dynamo scripts, whatever. Uh, and in, with tools like this, designers have a lot of power to develop a lot of those things themselves. Now, of course, there's more advanced things that uh, we can develop. We can focus on more interesting challenges, I think. But for the general uh, you know, designer, they can use this technology to build things quickly, automate things. It lowers the barrier. It makes it more reasonable to automate certain things maybe uh even develop scripts that create new geometry you interact with technology different you can have different types of conversations about what you can do with these types of tools offering then new things to your clients um, you can create scripts that make geometry you can create things that you know predict different outcomes so it's really endless there's so much you could do with this and it'll continue to grow so what I want to show you today is um, this example here. So what I'm going to do is create four uh, nodes. Uh, one's going to create the levels, and we're going to create five levels. We're going to create grids. We're going to create views uh, for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and then place those views on sheets. I didn't mention it here, but we're also going to create those sheets as well. That This thing's going to do both. Um, so it's really, I think, this is a basic example uh, to show you how quick we can go from no code to having a working graph that, that sets up our Revit model. So you can take this idea that we... Uh, that I show here today and apply it to you know various other things but look at it from as if I'm building this from the perspective of a designer uh, I'm not going to do really any modification of the code none at all it's going to be copy paste if I get an error I'm going to go back to chat GPT and search that error um, and get a working uh, script out of it and then I'll move on to the next item in the list. So, um, one of the more, I think, really important things is kind of outlining what you're trying to do. Really create a good starting prompt. I think that's really important and really powerful. So, this is the prompt I'm going to paste into ChatGPT. And uh, again, I, I think I mentioned this, but... ChatGPT4 is what I'm going to be using. Um, and so I'm going to paste this in there. And I think this one here, this is really important. We will tackle these tasks one at a time. I will implement and test the code for each task before we move on to the next one. So are you clear on this process? So, um, oops, didn't mean to do that. But I think this is important, and I've done this before with other things that I've worked on with ChatGPT is really saying, hey, do you have all the information you need? Can you kind of work through this before we answer the question? Those are really important steps that can make your interaction with ChatGPT Chat much more effective. Um, and so I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to copy it uh, into ChatGPT. So let me um, open Google. Actually, let me just minimize this. All right, so um, 
I've already got it pasted in there, so there it is. We're using GPT-4, which is paid for, I think, for now. Um, they may change that in the future, I don't know. And then I don't know if it's really necessary to use the browsing, the internet browsing, but I'm gonna turn it on just to see. Um, and yeah, and maybe if there's any API changes, I am using Revit 24, so if there are any issues with the API uh, changes, it should be able to, to find that stuff. Um, so this is the model, it's a blank model. I All I did was file, new, uh, I did none, uh, okay, and then I clicked on Imperial for this one. So if you wanna do the same, then uh, that's what you, you've gotta do. Let me close that. And because it is, it doesn't have anything in it, um, I did have to add a sheet. So if you go here and if you go to new sheet, it's going to uh, have nothing in here. So just load it in and then it should, you should have title blocks if you downloaded it, your Revit yourself. If not, you could load in your own title block. Uh, but I just loaded in this 30 by 42, the E1 horizontal uh, sheet or the title block. I'm going to delete that sheet. So we have no sheets. We've got one floor plan. I'm going to rename this one to just temp. Oops, didn't mean to. Okay. So this is the model. The idea is that we're going to go through those and essentially set up a project a Revit model. Now keep in mind this isn't everything, we're not creating dependent views, we're not creating scope boxes and all of that, but um, or like applying templates. This is a basic example, but I think you can kind of get that you can take it that far from this. So I'm going to time this, but I am going to uh, kind of fast forward it and then we'll discuss afterwards uh, the kind of what I went through. And then I'll download this. You can have the the ChatGPT uh, script, so all the stuff that that it returns, and then also I will share the Dynamo script that we create today. So, anyways, uh, let me jump into it, and then yeah. So here goes. All right, so there it is. There's the uh, model. Everything was uh, built with uh, Dynamo except for the scope box. So I did go in and create that and I assigned the grids to the scope box. Um, and But that was it. So everything else, the levels, except for this temp uh, level here, but all of these levels were created and then uh, we've got all of our different grids and then we've got our different floor plans for electrical, mechanical and plumbing and then if we scroll down we've got our sheets with the views placed uh, on them. So if we go in there we can see the viewport has been created. Uh, it's not centered, it just kind of puts it on zero, zero. I didn't update the code to, to change it uh, but you certainly can modify it obviously. Um, but let me, I closed Dynamo, so let me reopen that. I'll show you the, the Dynamo nodes. Um, but this is the conversation right here. Uh, so if you, I'm going to export this so that you can read through it if you like. 
Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they don't get a good results from ChatGPT. I assume maybe they're using ChatGPT 3. I'm not sure. But this kind of proves that this is very valuable. I was able to do this in roughly 20, 25 minutes. And um, you could say that, well, I know Python, so it's easier. But I would argue that it isn't because um, I think it's easy in general because the warnings you get, like the errors, really is the only thing you need to describe in the code itself. You just need to say, hey, it's not working because this error, um, and it will output something else. Now, if you're modifying it, obviously that's a little bit different, but for just error, like troubleshooting and copying the code, you could get that going pretty quickly without needing to know very much Python at all and or other languages if you're building other things. So here's the code. Uh, it's it's all written in Python. It's in there. I've saved the the graph, so uh, you'll be able to find find that on my GitHub. Feel free to check that out and download it. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, a few things I've had to change. I had to make sure it was Imperial, wasn't using metrics. Um, here's the the sheets and stuff this one was pretty straightforward and easy this one uh took a minute of troubleshooting just getting it correct and grabbing the title block it was trying to uh, it had a condition in there that was checking for a uh, title block name and i just said hey there's only one in here just use whatever is in there don't put any hard checks in there so um that was probably the part that I spent the most on was this last node but overall around 20-25 minutes was the time to build this so I mean that's incredible especially if you start to give this power like encouraging designers like for them to start using this or just anybody using it if you are really good at development this could uh, make you a lot faster now I don't consider myself a developer and I'm not developing huge applications that are used all over the place, uh, but I would say a tool like this for things uh, like this that are just like automating this or creating some generative uh, type code to create some type of geometry um, for a project, those are I think really good use cases. So I can't speak to big applications, but for this, amazing. I mean, you can create things incredibly quick you can take your existing code and and put it in here and say hey can you add comments to this can you refine this and make it a little bit better uh can you take what i've created here and make it into a function so i can use it in other places so there's just so much you can do with that uh, and you don't necessarily need to know python so that's really incredible and like you could build something that accidentally messes up your model well encourage designers to sync and save their stuff before they do that and if they mess things up just get out of the model and try over again so um i would definitely encourage this tool i think it it leads to a really uh, great workflow with technology and code and and design it's, it's just really powerful so anyways this is the conversation here that you see uh, uh that I've had with ChatGPT4. Uh, it's back and forth, just working through the code. I say, hey, this code is good, and then moves on to the next next task. So um, I try to, at the end of this, take all the working code and pull it together into a nice little table describing what the steps were, but it seemed to have trouble with that. This was kind of cool. It took all the main functions I was using and then described what they did. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then down here, I tried to uh, rephrase what I was saying and ask again. And you could see it almost did it name, description, working code. But then it created this really big uh, script here. So um, didn't work all the way. I didn't want to mess with it. But if you get to that point in this, you're reading it. That's kind of what I was trying to do. Uh, I just left it as is. But anyways, you can download this Dynamo script and the uh, chat GPT conversation uh, on my GitHub. Just check out the link below. So uh, back to the PowerPoint. So there's my start prompt. 
try to go to the next page. So uh, I kind of talked about this throughout this video, but there's so many cool things you can do with this, not just automation, but it can open up, it lowers the barrier for, for thinking computationally, using code, for creating things that may uh, be used for generative design or predictive modeling or um, certain workflows that benefit your, you know, working style. So just some things here I tried to write down of ways to think about this. Uh, I think it's really powerful. I, I know this tool can be really powerful. I use it all the time, and I think if you encourage your designers to use it, you'll start to see that as well. Uh, really, it's really powerful. Um, you can do a lot with it. So, encourage checking it out. Uh, it's I I just can't. I think I'm just so excited about it because we I built this in 20 25 minutes and it's working. Um, and you could imagine just doing that for anything. Anybody could do that. Uh, if they don't know code, open it up, search it, run it, and then they have now a thing they can use uh, for that project or more. And also you can think of a lot of times when we're deciding if we need to build something, sometimes it's like, well, it may not be beneficial for this one particular project, but maybe f if we can use it for a handful of projects then we get the ROI on it now it's like well if you can build it in five minutes and use it for this one project the ROI is already there so yeah so it's really cool I, I would encourage you to think about ways you could use a tool like this and then also share them below if you have cool ideas uh, or are already using this type of technology uh, so if you want to join like the conversation uh, there's a there's my Discord here if you want to check it out. Uh, there's I think we have uh, about uh, 750 people in it, so check that out. I think the conversations in there are pretty cool. Uh, that the link there should work. If it doesn't, let me know. There's also a link uh, below in the description. So, anyways, check that out. And that's all I've got for this video. Thanks a lot for for watching, and I will see you in the next one.